Hello everyone, I am over here. You can't see him right now, but I'm over here with Jonathan and I am going to be sharing today my secret sauce. <laughs> Hi! So Andrea, where are you from right now? Where, where are you right now? Right now I am in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Well, I mean, I can't show you the beach because we needed Wi-Fi and we needed to do all of this. But I am in my apartment in Playa del Carmen. Oh wow, that's cool. Uh, so Andrea, really, uh, thank you very much for accepting my invitation for uh, the secret sauce. Um, I, I really enjoyed your content and I really enjoyed um, one of the ways that I found you was one of the professors that we had together uh, from Full Sail and he talked to me about you and then I looked for you and I loved your content. I love your energy and also positivity. So um, I'm very grateful for you to accept this invitation for this crazy project, you know. Of course, I'm always a big fan of people who are doing cool projects and are doing things to, you know, collaborate and showcase other people and other people's projects. So I'm here. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Andrea, tell me more a little bit about yourself. Like from the beginning, um, how did you start it to become this social media, maybe guru, expert, uh, person? Uh, I, I saw that you are uh, a formal uh, TV person. So tell me, what did it took you from there? Where you're like, when when you were a child, uh, you were singing and stuff like that. So no, when I was a child, I was in front of cameras, talking to cameras like I do right now. So we would go on a trip, like a family trip and i would take over the camera and all like the home videos of my family are me like this is whatever this is blah 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 then my mom would be like andrea can you please stop for a second <laughs> so actually one of the things that i would love to do is get all those videos and do like a little remix throwback video content situation because i i was doing that since forever um so yeah it started since i was really little i've always i've always i've always been really outgoing and I don't know I like talking to cameras like I've said and I will say 10 more times <laughs> during this interview um, but then I went to school for communications and as soon as I graduated I got a job as a TV news reporter in Tampa Florida which is okay, cool. yeah um, and I worked there and I learned a lot because I was my own camera person I would edit all my own stuff and I was on in front of the camera doing live shots and being you know in the newscast every day at 5 p.m. so that definitely taught me a lot however it was really depressing because I was covering like crime and um, the politics wasn't that sad but I was covering a lot of like crime and and you know like I would I would go up to the news director like what should I cover today these are my ideas and they were like no 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 those ideas are too cute you are going to go cover the person that just got killed on third avenue and I was like oh again great so after after doing that for a while I was like okay I've learned a lot I I now I'm really quick at telling stories on video, which I've always loved to do, but I got really quick at it and editing and everything. So then I um, went to Full Sail University and there I got my master's in entertainment business and while I was doing that, I was like, I need a creative outlet. I need to do something creative with my free time. So that is when I started vlogging and I turned my living room into a little vlogging studio and I would do that in my free time and I started vlogging for fun. And then like a year later, I realized that I could start making money with my vlogs. So once I started monetizing it, I got really excited about it and I was like, I am never stopping. So I never did. That was like six years ago. That's great. So what made you, um, I heard that, you, you know, from, from the, having that job that is kind of like depressing and like the, the stories that you have to share were depressing maybe. Um, so what, what made you make the jump to this concept of digital nomad? and? And like jumping to to just taking that first jump that maybe might be scary for a lot of people. So what made you? What was that? 
moment. Right. So I was freelance for a little bit. Then I got a corporate job in Hawaii and I worked there for two years. And while I was doing that, I wasn't really able to travel a lot because Hawaii is so far out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean that traveling outside of traveling in the in the islands is kind of hard so I was getting a little antsy and I was like trying to figure out how I could incorporate more travel into my life so I actually went to my bosses and I was like hey how about I do this same job that I'm doing but I do it remotely and um, they accepted so that that is when I started my journey as a digital nomad I sat down with a friend and I was like where should I go and she was like have you been to Argentina and I'm like nope and I was like, cool. So I booked a ticket and two weeks later I was in Argentina and that is where my digital nomad journey started exactly three years ago. And ever since then, um, I have just been moving maybe like three to six months uh, to different cities. Was it scary at the beginning? No, <laughs> because I didn't really get scared of things like that because if it doesn't work out, you go back to what you were doing before, right? If you don't like a city that you go to, you move to another one and you sort of start over. So if you're not afraid of like starting over and messing up and redoing the whole thing, you can try a lot of things. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So you made that move. To, what was the approach for them? Like, how did you convince them? Like. You were like, hey, I work from here. Where was that like their reaction or your approach? So that is a very good question because a lot of people ask me, how can I transform my regular full-time job into remote? And I understand that not all bosses are going to be as friendly as mine, that they're going to accept that that leap and that, you know, um, a lot of people like having someone full-time in the office. And in some jobs, it's not even possible for you to do the tasks that you have uh, to do remotely. But in my case, I was noticing that I was doing a lot of things remotely and I was like uh, doing a lot of meetings via Skype and I was overseeing all the employees that I was overseeing with cameras, Skype, emails, texts, and I would go to the off their offices maybe like every once in a while. So I started noticing that, hey, I don't really need to be here. So in some jobs, if you don't really need to be here, you be at the office, you can start transitioning and like putting the systems in place to do it remotely. So if you're able to find uh, ways in which you can't make your tasks be done remotely without you there being present, and then you can do that for a while and really uh, like make them see that you are able to do it then maybe later you can present to them the idea of hey how about I do this and then maybe they can change some of the tasks that you currently do to make it so that you are doing more things that don't require you to be in the office uh, or maybe you can get a pay cut because you I mean you can get paid less but if you have more freedom Mm, you know, more flexibility of schedule and freedom and being location independent, that could be worth it. So, I mean, there are different ways to negotiate a, a, a transition like that. Um, and in my case, it worked. <laughs> well, what if the person says no? Like, that's the only income that you have. So, it's like... If the person says no, then your other chance of becoming location independent or becoming self-employed or becoming just independent in general, not even location independent, but independent, then the other option is to have, to have side hustles. So this transition for me from uh, that full-time job to remote was the beginning of the transition that got me to where I am today. So first I did that. But then while I was being remote, but fully employed with one company, then I started having side hustles, which is what people can do if they have a full time job in the morning, in the afternoon, on the weekends, go full force with whatever you have that you want to work on and whatever it is, like your passion project or your little side business, go full force on that. So I went full force on my side hustles, which were, it's a travel OD, my travel vlog, 
and also I started a cleaning company in Panama. I was doing those two things while I was still employed with that company full time. So my income was coming from them and then all my free time, I wasn't really doing a lot of stuff. Yes, I was in Argentina, but I really, do, in my time in Argentina, I really didn't get um, to explore too much because I was working. <laughs> um, so yeah, all my free time, I was building those two things. And when those two things started to make me money when I had enough clients, then I was like, okay, now I can transition from full time remote to part-time remote and then continue to work on the other thing and then I did that for like six more months and then when it's a travel OD and my cleaning company started doing even better then I went completely independent um, like I, 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 I started being an independent consultant for that company so I never really left them because a lot of people have this idea that you have to quit your job and start traveling the world and everything will be magical and easy and you're going to survive and it'll be super sustainable but if you do a slow very calculated transition is going to be better for you in the long run because you're going to be able to sustain it. Does that make sense? <laughs> Absolutely. I think that you covered some points that I I, I didn't know. <laughs> so I, 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 I it's it's interesting and and because I, I think that and, and for me right now I'm I'm kind of trying to do that transition also um, mostly with my services digital marketing um, and. And I find it sometimes scary, you know, to right now I have somebody that pays me uh, that it, I have to be here, but I don't have to be in an office. So I can be in a co-working chair space like right now. Um, but just doing that transition for a lot of people might be scary. Uh, and just, in, and that's, it, it, it's also scary the, to lose um, what it's um, secure, you know, that security of um, stability and, and that um, income and just, and, and having maybe a, a certainty that maybe just people, maybe myself also, um, have. But I, I just love that, you know, you went smoothly and you thought about all the process. And and were you open about all the process? Like when, for, when, uh, for your, also your your bosses, like you were like, or did you do like the, the hustles or did you, you did your company and your blog separately or like hide in while they were like, and you're just like kept it quiet or not? Not hiding because I am, you know, I'm, I love social media and I'm very open about everything I do. And It's a Travel OD wouldn't have been able to start if I wouldn't have been active on social media with my, you know, going full force with my personal branding and the branding of, the, of It's a Travel OD. Uh, if I wouldn't have been open about that, then I wouldn't be here right now. So no, I wasn't secretive at all. I was putting it all out there. Um, but. I, I'm, I'm going to say that I definitely didn't know that that was the trajectory I wanted to take. I had no freaking idea because <laughs> I never have any idea what I want to do in two years. What I do is that I let experiences or projects or ideas that come to mind really dictate what's going to happen next. So if tomorrow I meet a friend who has something cool going on with I don't know, real estate random, this is not happening, but this is an example. Um, then I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And then suddenly in six months, you might see me doing a project that's in real estate. So that, that I'm not doing anything with real estate, by the way. I was just a random example. But what I'm trying to say is that it depends on people I meet, what I learn. Maybe I went to like some, like I went to a retreat not too long ago and there were a bunch of, uh, it was a retreat for entrepreneurial women. And there were a lot of cool women doing cool things. And they, one of them convinced me to start a YouTube channel because I am a vlogger, but I wasn't really on YouTube for my It's a Travel OD. I was I'm focusing on Facebook. But they convinced me about starting a YouTube channel. So one month later, I did. So it's about the things that inspire me and motivate me along the way. And then sometimes I take sharp turns and sometimes I add on projects to what I already do. But yeah, I didn't know that was what I was gonna do. I just did it. <laughs> That's awesome. So talking about projects that you are uh, adding to, um, 
I, I heard that you trade with hotels and, and companies uh, for accommodations and like pays, I guess. How do you, um, or how did you um, did that? Like, how was the approach? How was the idea? I was like, you were like, okay, I'm gonna do a video um, and then I'm gonna share it and like, hey guys, um, I am a vlogger and I would like to stay uh, free in your hotel for a month. What do you think? Well, it's not quite like that. Um, no, no, I, and I am not really doing that as much. I started doing that at the beginning of It's a Travel OD because that was the way in which I could get content and I could get like a portfolio going for It's a Travel OD without, because at the beginning, it's hard to be like, hey, I'm a travel vlogger, I have two followers, and I can make a vlog for you, and you can pay me. They would be like, um, how about no, right? So at the beginning, I was like, okay, let me get some clients for exchange deals, with exchange deals, instead of having them pay me. So that, that is how I got my, all my first content in hotels and in different places, by doing ex exchange deals. Uh, now I'm not doing that as much, now I'm actually getting paid for most of the vlogs that I do. Um, sometimes they have an element of exchange, because sometimes it's cool to, you know, travel and if, if it fits my schedule and whatever I'm doing, sure. Um, but yeah, right now, like my main source of income is the vlogs that I do for travel related companies or sometimes I do vlogs even for companies that are, aren't travel related, but I don't share them on my platforms. They use them for their social media or for their whatever it is that they're, they have going on. That's, that's, and again, I, I see that again, the transition uh, from, from doing that to very transitional. Um, so how was the approach? I mean, from, from, from that beginning, you know, to your, your job, okay, I'm gonna buy a ticket to Argentina, then I'm going to talk to hotels, right? To exchange, and, 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 and I like that idea, but it, it, I mean, the, that first step, what were the, those first steps that sometimes I was like, how am I going to do that first step? So that once you do the first step and second, then you start running, but how do you did those first steps? The first steps are just thinking out, as outside the box as you can and trying 700 different things. Some of the things that you try are not gonna work. A lot of the things are not gonna work, but that's why you keep trying new things. So um, I'm trying to think of something that didn't work uh, that I did in my transition. Um, not sure, I can't think of anything right now. I put myself on the spot, see how I did that? I'm so terrible to myself. Um, no, but yeah, some things don't, are not gonna work, so you just have to keep going and practicing. And um, I noticed that that exchange deal program was a really great way to get content, and what I needed at the beginning of It's a Travel OD was to get content um, and to get examples of what I could do for them. So instead of approaching all these people and being like, hey, can you give me free things? Can you give me free stays? I was like, hey, so I can give you a package in which I'll make you a vlog, I'll give you a gallery of photos of my stay, I will um, sit down with you and have a little brand social media consultation. So by approaching a few like small hotels with things like that, I got a lot of practice and now I am starting to do that with bigger and bigger com companies. So yeah, that is, uh, that is another of the things that I do at the moment. I do pick my brain sessions, I call them, in which I do um, basically consultations of social media, vlogging, storytelling, and yeah, how to promote yourself better through digital mar marketing, which is how I have gotten everything I have gotten through social media. That's really good. So how do you, now that you mentioned, you know, you're doing consultation, how do you manage to um, support your lifestyle? Right now you're doing the um, blog, but what else are you doing? So I have the vlogs that I've been doing, um, and those are the main chunk of my uh, income right now. 
Um, then I also do the consultations. I have some steady clients that do like a monthly package and I talk to them pretty much every day depending on their package. Um, and I have some clients that I talk to one time because they only had uh, questions about one specific project. Um, or I have clients that I talk to weekly. So that is another of my, uh, that's another of my sources of income. Then also I have some passive income going on with my book. I wrote a book about vlogging to motivate people and tell them how to start a vlog from scratch. Of course, that is a question that I get super often. So instead of answering the question over and over again, I was like, I am going to write everything down. And now when people ask me, I'll respond to one question, and by the second question, I'll be like, here's the link. You can buy the book. <laughs> um, so I have that book on Amazon, and um, you get uh, monthly royalties from the book. So that is there too, some passive income going on. And um, the cleaning company that I talked about, I sold it. So that's an, some income as well there that I got. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's great. So, tell me if somebody comes to you, I know that link below book. <laughs> um, so if somebody comes to you and um, and says, "Give me three steps. I want to change my life in two weeks," what would you say? I'm gonna. T you know what I'm gonna tell them? Stop right there. It's not gonna happen in two weeks. You have to be positive and you have to work hard, but you have to be realistic. Uh, nothing happens in two weeks. It has not happened for me in two weeks. And if you can make it happen for yourself in two weeks, good for you. Then you can give me your tricks because I don't know how that works. Um, for me, it has been a really long process. Like I started vlogging for fun. I did it for fun for a year. I didn't see a single cent come in. I got a lot of opportunities and met a lot of people and did some cool things, but I didn't make any money the first year. Then I started monetizing it. Then I practiced even more and more. Then I was like, I don't want to keep doing pop culture. I want to change to travel. So I changed the whole branding and style of my vlogs. Then I got a corporate job that taught me a lot of things. And then I got the idea of being a digital nomad. And I have been doing this transition for three years from remote to complete, you know, self-employed, independent location, independent digital nomad. So it won't happen in two weeks. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> I love it. So I see you have a tattoo. Tell me about that tattoo and why OD? Yeah, so this tattoo. So basically OD, of course, is overdose. So it means that in everything I do, I do it 100%, right? So when I used to have a pop culture vlog, it was it's a pop OD, right? Now it's a travel OD because I overdose in travel. So this tattoo says it's uh, no, yeah, it's a space OD and it basically means that whatever I do, I'm going to do it 100%. Uh, some people ask me if I'm going to fill it out at some point and I don't know, maybe, um, with what, who knows? Because right now it's travel in 10 years. I don't know. I might fall in love with a ko koala bears and I'll do it's a koala OD. I don't freaking know. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, so, if you could, uh, and I'm coming out, you know, the, the concept is secret sauce, so right? So, if you can uh, take Andrea, right, and you can grab all the ingredients, right, and put them in a bottle and call this Andrea's secret sauce. <laughs> you see how we, how we put it all together? What would it be, the secrets of your success? <laughs> Okay, the secrets would be, number one, I am 100% a workaholic, but because I like to do what I'm doing. So doing what you love is one of my mottos. Since I do what I love, I can be a workaholic. So that would be number one. Number two, I think that if you meet me in person, uh, in a restaurant, in my apartment, uh, at a grocery store, or in, in an Instagram story, in an Instagram live, or here, I am going to be the same exact person everywhere. So authenticity, I guess it's something that's really important. I don't wanna meet you 
in person and you not be the same thing I'm t talking to right now. So that is another thing. I am really transparent about everything and how I do everything. Um, that's number two. Number three would be that I have found something that I like to do and I have practiced a lot. So practice and consistency. So I found vlogging and then I never stopped. And I like talking to cameras, but I've gotten better at it because I've practiced not only professionally, but also for fun. Uh, so that is another thing, practice and consistency. Another thing is that I love to learn. Should I stop? <laughs> Are those too many ingredients? <laughs> Another thing is that I love to learn. So since I love to learn, I continue to like grow my skill set and things like uh, digital marketing, I didn't know as much, but then I started learning about it. Social media seems easy and normal and oh, you just post a photo and you get followers, but it's not that way. So I've learned a lot about social media uh, through people, through courses, through retreats and workshops that I've done. So being open to learning, I think would be another of the secrets. Um, and I think to end, maybe, uh, I am not scared of anything. I will try anything. I will go anywhere. If I mess up, I will be sad for two minutes and then I will try again. Like, that is the, that is the main thing. You can't be scared. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. So, since we are all about um, learning, tell me about your book and tell me another book that you might be reading. So right now I'm reading Rice and Grind by the uh, shark, the Damon. Right, Damon. Yes, him. Um, and it's really. With my book. This the same one. I think so. Yeah. 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 Sure. Rice and Grind. Yeah, that is the book I'm reading right now. I wait and I, I like. I'm not reading it. I'm listening to it because I don't have the patience. Like I am too energetic and active to like sit down and read. Uh, so I listen to books and it's very handy because I listen to them while I cook. I love cooking. Uh, I listen to them while I cook or while I clean or while I do like thing, normal things. Um, so yes, and it's really inspiring. Yes, yes, that is the book, really cool. <laughs> That's the book that I'm listening to right now. And it's cool because it has the stories of a lot of people that have made it and um, how they have done it. So it's very, really inspiring to me to hear stories like that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm listening. And my book, my book is, took me like three months of uh, like sitting down to write every day to get it ready. And then uh, when I thought I was done, I wasn't done. Then I had to send it to a book editor. Then I had to get think of the title and think of the subtitle and the cover and all of that. Um, so it was a process that was super challenging, but it made it really rewarding to finally see it out and to see people buying it. And I get Instagram story tagged on Instagram stories all the time, or or people send me photos with the book, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so freaking amazing. Uh, but um, and I have, I've also seen uh, like six people that have told me that they actually started their vlog after reading my book. So that has just been amazing to me. Um, and it basically is a really straightforward guide of what is a vlog, what you have to do to start uh, from scratch, even if you have no experience with video and stuff. And um, personal branding tips on how you can make it better and uh, editing and all of that. So yeah. Awesome, so um, if there's something else you wanna say to this, meeting uh, this to the cameras to so to wrap it up i think in my case what i love to do is showcase what i do not to show off but to tell people that it is possible and i also showcase all the like struggle and hustle and the, the behind the scenes because it might look pretty but it's it takes a little bit of work um but yeah but it is possible and basically i found my passions and I merge my passions into everything I do. So my passions are vlogging and traveling, and I found a way to mix both of those. So whatever it is that people like to do, then just find ways in which you can 
use them to help other people and then you will be able to have them uh, work for you so that you can monetize them. That's so cool. does that make sense? Definitely. <laughs> that too definitely. general? <laughs> oh, no, definitely. I, I, think. I think that's it's been great, you know, and, and your, just your tips and so far I've learned We've been talking about what, 30 minutes and I've just learned a lot. So thank you very much for you know accepting this invitation and, and for everybody, I'm gonna link um, her book and the book that she's reading also on the link below. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then I'll, then I'll talk to you soon then. And thank you very much, I appreciate it. And everyone can go follow me on Instagram and on uh, my Facebook, which is where I post all my vlogs. Well, I'll put the links right here and also in the description below. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Andrea, and have a great day. I appreciate it, everything. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So thank you very much for watching that video. If you like that video, please subscribe and like and share this video. And if you have questions for the future uh, people that I will be interviewing, please let me know and I will ask them those questions. See you next time. Bye.